Hi, I'm Matthew Swiderski, a Strategic Accounts Manager with QSIS, and I'm going to give you a brief demonstration on some of the great ways that QSIS integrates with the Microsoft Teams room. A couple things to keep in mind. First, that this user experience is consistent on any core. While my demonstration uses an MV32, this is a consistent user experience all the way from vCore up to our flagship processor, the 610. Second, our second page experience works on any Windows-based MTR from any manufacturer. Well, let's get started. We access the second page experience by the hitting the room controls button in the bottom right-hand corner of the MTR page. When we open this up, I want you to notice something is that using, using a cascading st style sheet, we're mimicking the look and feel of our native Microsoft Teams room experience. The first tab that we have is our traditional AV tab. Now, we are a control manufacturer. We can control anything that any other control manufacturer can, including video routing. Now, if you're using a third-party system, you can leverage a QSIS plugin to, to very easily route that video. Or you can use an MV32 to seamlessly route that video. One of the advantages of using an MV32 is that I can do priority-based auto-switching. Another big advantage of that is that I can do auto-content sharing. Traditionally, if you would put an auto-switching HDMI switcher on the content input of an MTR, you'd have a blank screen and that it would always maintain sync with that content input. When the NV32 recognizes that no sources are connected, it will drop sync with the Microsoft Teams room and sending it back to the standard, uh, the standard MTR screen. Another huge feature for QSIS in an MTR environment is our ability to do camera preview and multi-cameras very easily and very seamlessly. You can see that I have two cameras set up, one pointing at the studio, one pointing at myself. I can have full control of these cameras and I can add just about as many cameras as I want to that system. Again, this is completely customizable. So if you're leveraging the automatic camera preset recall plugin, you could turn that on and off as users want. Our next tab on our first UCI is the environmental controls. We get asked all the time, can you control lights? We can. Can you control shades? Absolutely. Can you control HVAC? No problem. Anything that you can control with, via third-party control, we can control. We have QIO, G, uh, QIO boxes that ha can control for RS-232. We have contact closure via our GPIO. Or if you're glutton for punishment, you can control things via IR. The next tab on our first UCI is the room, is the room layout. And think of a MTR in a high impact space with movable furniture. Today, it's a, high, it's a, board, room, uh, a board meeting with users calling in from around the world. On Wednesday, we're gonna use it as a hybrid learning environment uh, for an internal training class. And on Friday, it may be a CEO town hall meeting. Very quickly and easily, I can switch between the different modes and automatically route my audio, my video, my control, my cameras to whatever setup that I want. It very easily allows less technical users to set up the room optimally. The last button on here is the help desk button. We're going to get to that in a little moment. And one of the other features that QSIS, uh, that adds a lot of power to Microsoft Teams room environment is our ability to seamlessly integrate, bring your own devices. I'm going to plug in the USB on my laptop. USB detected. Now there's two things that you notice. First, you heard an audio cue telling the user that the USB is connected. Also, you notice that our, we brought up a completely different UCI that's optimized for a bring your own device environment. This gives the end user not only a video, a visual, but an audio cue that they're using the system differently. You'll notice that the interface is op, has been optimized for a bring your own device environment. Even when using a laptop, and leveraging all the QSIS peripherals, we can still route video as we want, adjust the volume, mute. I have full camera control, which is especially important in a bring your own device in a high impact space. And if, and I, and if I was in a call, I'd be able to accept the call, hang up the call, and go into privacy mode. One of the last features that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be our QSIS Reflect Enterprise Management and how we imp use that to implement a help desk operation. Now, it's an AV system. It's not perfect. It's going to need help every once in a while, even if it's a QSA system. So the end user can click on this question mark, and it brings up a, a, a box that says, tell us what's not working. Now, we're going to be very original, and we're going to have an audio problem in that room. Now, what that did is it sent a message to a Microsoft Teams channel alerting our technical support team that we're having an issue in a room. I'll bring that up, and I'll show it to you. 
as you can see, as you can see, at 9.20 a.m., QSIS helped us that we have an audio assistance requested in the QSIS Roundtable Americas, a very original sounding room. And you see that below, we have two links, one to system status and one to user control interfaces. Both of these links will take us to our QSIS Reflect Enterprise Manager, our remote monitoring and man management service. So I'm going to click on system status. As you can see, Based on my permissions, I can see the QSIS trade show systems. You can tell that they don't trust me to monitor a whole lot of systems since there's only six systems in there. If I'm going to dive deeper down into that, I can see all the different systems that we have, including in their statuses at a brief glance. As you can see, my demo kit is running a single warning. If I were to click on my demo kit, I get a quick snapshot of the room in its entirety. I can see the, last, the design file that we're running and the last time I uploaded it. I can see what core I'm running my design on, and I can see what firmware I'm running my design on. I can also scroll down and see the status of all my peripherals. I can see my cameras are connected. I can see that no video sources are connected, but my MTR is connected. I can see that uh, my IO bridge is working. I can also see that my monitoring proxy that I set up is my help desk alert has been triggered. Not only can we monitor and manage via QSIS Reflect Enterprise Manager, but we can actually help the end user troubleshoot the system. Anywhere in the world, we have access to every UCI that lives on that core. So if I look at my UCIs, I can see my second page experience for Microsoft Teams room. I can see a UCI, or bring your own device UCI, but I can also see, see this admin UCI. I'm gonna bring this up in bigger screen so I can show it to you. Now what you'll notice on this is this is completely invisible to the end user. But anywhere in the world, I can access this. Not only do I have all the features that I had on my previous UCIs, but I get a whole lot more information that can ex help with remote troubleshooting. Not only can I route video via my NV32, but I also can see what format the source is outputting. I can see if HDCP is required. I can even set edit. Now, how many times have you had an issue with a laptop plugging in that you simply told the user, unplug it and plug it back in? and it resolved the issue. We can simulate that with the hot plug trigger button right here. I have full camera control just as I would in any of my other UCIs. One big benefit is that is that a technician on the other side of the world can get a snapshot or a glimpse into the room and see what users are in there and what's going on. Our conferencing tab via the single USB connection that we have both to our Microsoft Teams room and our Bring Your Own Device laptop gives us a lot of information. We can confirm that USB is, is connected. We can see if the speaker phone's active and if we're in a, in a call. We can, even see, we can see if we're ingesting the camera streams. And we can even have basic call controls like answering and hanging up. One of the very cool features is that via our HID, uh, USB HID controller block, not only can we get information, but we can tell the devices to do certain things. If you've ever had an end user that plugged in a laptop via USB and they got no audio, well, perhaps the volume's turned down. We can actually tell any laptop to, that plugs into the system to ramp up their volume to 100 to create a consistent user experience. So what I'm going to try and do is bring down my volume, and it's not going to work. Oh, that didn't work. The last feature, the last tab that we have is our audio tab. And we can get a quick glimpse into the audio system. We can confirm that nobody made any changes to the gain structure. We can see if our Dante or our QLAN microphones are, are connected. And if we had PoE speakers, we could confirm that those are connected as well. Finally, let's say we resolve the audio issue. On our help desk tab, we can send a message back to the user in the room, alerting them that either the issue has been re resolved remotely or that a technician has been dispatched. You can even customize this. I'm going to use a pre canned message so I don't get in trouble with Frank. See touch screen for help desk comment. As you can see, that this message has been sent back to the users in the room. And it's telling them that their issue has been remoted, uh, resolved remotely. It, you also should have heard a message alerting the users in the room that would have played over the speakers in the room to go see the touch panel from a message from our help desk. 
If you require further assistance, you click yes, and it will keep that system in yellow in a warning, alerting the help desk that they still need to resolve the issue. If you click no, the system will go back into the green, and you're ready to go. It's just a brief demonstration of the power of QSIS in a, in a Microsoft Teams room environment. But keep in mind that the power of QSIS can be leveraged with any UC 